Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, since um, many of you do still have the um, Philip Schwartz Initiative meeting ahead, I think we should um, keep inside time and keep in the schedule a little bit and get our um, last plenary session, the closing plenary, started. Um, we thought with it we have um, 60 minutes, makes three times 20. And we'd start with the 20 minute wrap up uh, from the four workshops that we did have in the morning. <coughs> Current challenges in the Ukrainian academic sector, long term German Ukrainian academic cooperation, EU accession and integration, and new academic and societal discourses in Ukraine and Germany. Um, perhaps I might ask, since we do have those beautiful seats here and we do have microphones up here, I might ask the rapporteurs from those four workshops to come up here and join me on the, on the stage. And uh, while they take their seats, uh, I remember that we had prepared three um, guiding questions, uh, key findings, um, next steps to take, and the last was um, what gives you hope for the future, to, to end on a hopeful note. Um, so most welcome to my, um, my partners in wrapping up this, this morning. Um, and I don't know, I didn't make a plan in which, uh, in which succession we want to do this, but perhaps we can do it uh, alongside the agenda. So we'd start with uh, current challenges in the Ukrainian academic sector. The mic is to whom? To you. Hi. Um, yeah, so we are supposed to answer three questions, right? <laughs> So and the first one was, what's the most important finding and what's the take home message? So and there was lots of things uh, proposed. So I apologize that yeah, some things we, I, I will omit. So and we decided that the take home message was the cooperation and not networking uh, among Ukrainian scientists. So because of course funding is really important, um, but no one will give us money if they see that we are not the union, that we are not able to cooperate. So that's why we think that the networking and uh, working together is the key to, to push for new reforms, to, uh, to ask for funding and to pursue the, uh, the, the projects. So, and there are different points in this. Uh, so, uh, of course, we can uh, pursue interna internationalization, so the cooperation with uh, foreign partners like German uh, researchers and organizations. So, second is promoting the science in Ukrainian society so that younger generations are encouraged to, to uh, pursue a scientific career. Uh, then, of course, we need to establish new organizations and communities uh, for specific disciplines uh, in Ukraine. So because in the Western countries there are uh, uh, organizations like uh, different societies, they exist, and in Ukraine it's uh, on a pretty rudimentary scale. So uh, there is definitely lack of cooperation in this regard. Uh, so. Another point is the uh, cooperation with industrial partners, because of course if we want to get the funding, we don't need just to uh, talk to the government, but we need to talk to, to industry, and that's why we need to, again, network, organize conferences and different events to bring together academics and, and uh, business. And of course, importantly, once we establish the networks of scientists inside the Ukraine, we can establish different uh, events which teach uh, Ukrainian scientists the best practices of, of, uh, of research uh, which is done in, in the Western countries, such as publishing papers, uh, organizing conferences, and man managing the, the, the networks of scientists. So which are the most important steps we need to take? So. Um, 
as I said, we need to establish new organizations uh, from, so not top-down, but bottom-up approach. And um, in this way, we can uh, col establish collaborations between these communities inside the Ukraine and international organizations. Uh, so then uh, we need to think about establishing grants for Ukrainian scientists from the European uh, funding agencies, including the uh, German uh, funding agencies. Uh, then what was said is the open access for data so that uh, the Ukrainian scientists have uh, yeah, uh, access to the knowledge, uh, the international knowledge, scientific knowledge. Uh, one important thing was is that uh, we also need, so when we establish new reforms, we should not forget about the older generation of scientists because very often it's a bottleneck to, to reform the system and many uh, um, older uh, researchers, they, they see it as a threat so that the traditions are not kept. And uh, that's why when we, uh, when we have this networking uh, events or organizations, we need to take in the, into account that we bring together younger generations and older generations so that we can work together. Uh, and of course, once the networks and organizations are established, these bodies, they can push for reforms, so they can push politicians for reforms and uh, providing the fi funding for specific needs for each discipline. Uh, so on the positive points, what gives, uh, what gives us hope? Uh, um, so there are, there are two things. So first is that there are positive points which do exist. So we, we were able to name quite a few positive things which exist in the uh, Ukrainian uh, academic uh, community. So such as adaptability, resilience, and independence of Ukrainian scientists also existence of educational and research programs and schools and traditions uh, and also academic exchange. Uh, and the last thing which gives me hope personally is that this particular event. So the fact that it takes place, it also, it's really important that we can move forward and solve the most pressing challenges. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, and with, with any, without any ado, I would uh, pass on the word to the second rapporteur from the group Long-Term German-Ukrainian Academic Cooperation. Um, yes, please. Um, so this was our section, and uh, one of the key m moments to take out is that uh, Ukraine and Ukrainian scholars uh, here in Germany have a, a highly qualified experts to offer in all possible disciplines, but they have to learn also how to present importance of, of their expertise, uh, expertise uh, to their German colleagues. And also on the top of that, that we have all uh, the skills how to adapt in a polycrisis situation, flexibility of thinking quite often, and openness to quick changes. Uh, this is what we also learn from this very difficult situation in which we are all. And then we were discussing exactly uh, along the lines of uh, group or, uh, groups of disciplines, what we can offer, what spheres that are important. And we started with uh, humanities. Uh, uh, and here we, we defined that actually there are a lot of blind spots. And for example, that Ukraine has a very strong uh, school of medievalists. Uh, and we also can offer uh, expertise based on knowledge. So uh, these are scholars who can, can not only offer knowledge, but help to translate primary sources in literature uh, and in history. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, this also might be important uh, to another group who is working with linguistics, with uh, journalism, uh, so uh, we can offer help uh, based on our cultural knowledge to propaganda, to disinformation uh, narratives, because it's not only about cybersecurity, but also to recognizing narratives, knowing the par uh, patterns, and so on. Um, so this is very much part of the security, which is important both for Ukraine and for Germany. If we're talking about social sciences, uh, then this is the knowledge about uh, those who are displaced, and we know that we have uh, close to one million in Germany and uh, up to five million in in other countries. So uh, in order to help uh, either to uh, integrate or adapt uh, the, uh, and find what are the main issues and problems people are facing here, uh, we need people who know uh, cultural, uh, who are close culturally, who know speak languages. Uh, but it is also important, for example, for all discussions about the Ukraine's recovery, because if we are having recovery conference, then we have to know to, for whom to recover, what to recover, and with whom to recover. So where people will be living, uh, what will be the society's preferences, and, and so on. So this is uh, the huge uh, sphere of social sciences uh, and we also know, uh, we discussed it yesterday, that in majority of cases, Western scholars are not allowed to conduct a field work in Ukraine. So in this case, this uh, job should be outsourced to Ukrainian experts. Then we discussed uh, life sciences, uh, uh, biochemistry, medicine, and many, many more. And here we also have a lot of expertise uh, based on experience linked to war, uh, to in the medicine, in orthopedic, uh, but also in biotechnologies, which quite often are high, high quality. Um, but the issue here is that uh, what is very important for Ukrainian scholars to learn, uh, first of all, how to build up uh, knowledge about the pa patterns and how uh, help to cooperate in this field because uh, legislation uh, about the patents in Germany and in Ukraine are very different, but also uh, learn to be visible to uh, businesses and learn how to use the venture capital, both in Ukraine and outside of Ukraine, uh, to make this uh, very sustainable link. Uh, and uh, finally, we also discussed uh, some issues which need to be targeted. And these issues were a question of reapproachment, uh, institutional, uh, in, and these are many level issues. Uh, the reapproachment, for example, uh, in uh, again uh, minor things such as courses, uh, credits, recognition, but also possibility to co supervise or uh, for Academy of Sciences, they have much less possibilities than, for example, universities to, to have bilateral agreements. Uh, we also uh, were discussing uh, issues of uh, establishing institutions uh, in future, and uh, there are several examples. One of them uh, I also represent at this conference, Vuyas, uh, to uh, Virtual Ukraine's Institute for Advanced Studies. So uh, then after the war, when Western scholars could come to Ukraine, so think not only going to outside, but also bring Western scholars to Ukraine, uh, to interdisciplinary uh, milieus, where they could uh, cooperate and bring their uh, social networks back to, to their, uh, their institutions. Um, and uh, we also discussed that uh, certain military knowledge uh, and military engineering uh, will be useful, uh, but it can be transferred into the uh, non-military spheres, su such as, for example, drones, uh, which can be used both military, but can be used in many other spheres. Uh, and these are the strengths, uh, strength moments of Ukrainian uh, scholarship, which can be used for bilateral exchanges and uh, cooperation.
Thank you. And also this ended on a notion of hope because things can be used for bilateral cooperation. And I think uh, what we see most importantly is the importance of networking, but also the importance of showing what Ukraine has to offer. And that is not, not unilateral, but it, that it's really bilateral cooperation. Um, EU accession and integration in the European higher education and research areas. I was part of this group and I think I was the only one in the room not speaking Ukrainian. And this is why the discussion was held in English and I'm very, very grateful for that. But I think it shows again that we don't have like, uh, like a cooperation on the same level, but that we, uh, starting with language, we in Germany have to learn a lot to really cooperate uh, on the same level. Um, and so I want to hand over to Roman Petrov as a reporter. Um, my name is Roman. Can you hear? My name is Roman Petrov. I represent Kiev Magilla Academy. Our group uh, discussed the impact of the EU accession process on um, educational reform and research activities in Ukraine since February 28, 2022 the EU accession became one of the most, after of course the war effort, dominant and leading um, fields of the Ukrainian recovery, peace building. It's a long-term project without any timeline and uh, expectation when it's going to finish. Uh, we have a more or less agreement that uh, before the war is over, the negotiations which are due to start this later this year will not be completed. Uh, nevertheless, the process of the EU accession represents and requires um, and poses a new, lots of new challenges for the Ukrainian academia and research community, since it requires coordinated effort in order to ensure fast and expedient alignment of Ukrainian political system, economy, legal system, and everything in line with uh, expectations of the European Union. In our panel, we discussed three issues, which are key findings, uh, activities to be expected, and what gives us a hope. Uh, with regard to the key findings, we indicated the following findings. First, there is a certain lack of coordination and networking between Ukrainian research and educational institutions, the government, local authorities and NGOs in the field of supporting um, expert knowledge and consultancy in the field of EU accession. Unfortunately, all these sectors go a little bit astray and uh, do not coordinate the activities. There is a growing demand in Ukraine on expert knowledge in EU um, studies and uh, knowledge related to the EU accession, which could be environmental, um, which could be also um, uh, artificial intelligence and other security as well, and other sectors. Uh, for this purpose, uh, of course, coordination should be set up on level of the government and local authorities, plus um, there was a proposal to set up hubs to actually um, to focus funding, expert knowledge, uh, as well as NGO coordination within certain sectors, let's say economy, uh, legal reform, um, and uh, environmental protection, and so on, depending on so-called clusters of the EU negotiations. Next finding uh, was a very, uh, actually, knowledge-provoking because it was agreed that, unfortunately, um, the war in Ukraine set up a foundation of so-called gigantic mutual lab. Lab in sense that the EU side, including Germany, of course may gain a lot studying the impact, resilience, um, and recovery, which is going to take place now and in future in Ukraine. And it could relate to issues not beyond political science and law. For example, it could relate to issues of environmental recovery. It could relate to issue of educational and civil protection resilience. Um, also, protection of rights of kids 
and so on, which could be certainly taken on board and studied by our Western partners. And vice versa, Ukraine may gain a lot of knowledge and experience and must to do it to learn how post-war recovery takes, took place and should take place taking into account best practices developed in the EU, in Germany, and beyond. And this mutual lab uh, approach could uh, be perfectly reflected in um, research calls, Horizon, DFG, um, possibly some funding authorities like uh, Humboldt and so on, with emphasis on research activities. And uh, it could engage a lot of, and to start, partnerships and cooperation between German and Ukrainian scholars. Next finding, what we approached was, could be defined as uh, um, not only adaptation, but also opportunities to be used. And there are plenty of opportunities emerging with the relevance to the EU accession, which must be promoted and taken into account. Um, for example, um, uh, among them to be mentioned, growing interest within the Western German academic community and doctoral students to do research in Ukraine, in fields what we just mentioned, and some doctoral schools in Ukraine already adjusting to it, it's very interesting. Then there are initiatives to set up new educational establishments, like for example, College uh, of Europe a subsidiary in Ukraine, which could train Ukrainian civil servants. There is a new, another example, a new initiative called DigiUni, supported by the EU. It's an endeavor to set up an online platform for research and teaching for Ukrainian students who are, um, who are not based in Ukraine or who change their affiliation. So in final question, what gives us hope? It was um, uh, endorsed by everyone that uh, remarkable adaptability and resilience of Ukrainian academia. It's an uh, it's, uh, experience to, to learn and to keep and maintain. It's a real, uh, it's a, it's a real achievement, and uh, nothing could stop Ukrainians' teach and research. Uh, then um, success stories actually mentioned here within this meeting gives us enormous hope. It's a great pleasure to see success stories of Ukrainian academics successfully integrated into German and European academic communities. Next, um, it must be also admitted that uh, after the war, the quality, entire quality of the Ukrainian academic community has significantly improved, significantly. And even if small margin of um, scholars are due to come back, it will be a great benefit for the Ukrainian system of higher education. And, um, also, there is a, a new potential for new topics, research, and it was said our major hope is young generation. Today's school pupils, students who will train here and then hopefully, if not return, but contribute to the Ukrainian recovery. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, and we come to the last um, to the last working group, uh, which is New Academic and Societal Discourses in Ukraine and Germany. Please. Thank you. My name is Ina Stupak, and I am pleased to present the results of uh, our workshop or because we have a very heated discussion on the topics <laughs> during the workshop. <laughs> Ukrainian, a very emotional person, and among us were <laughs> predominantly women. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> uh, and it's uh, a challenge to be the last reporting uh, the result of uh, previous three workshops because uh, we are grouped uh, around one theme, uh, around the Ukrainian researchers, uh, our future. Um, that's why I try not to repeat the results and the proposition which were made before me and so uh, try to do it very uh, briefly. So as uh, our uh, workshop uh, focuses on the academic discourse uh, in Germany and Ukrainian, the main aim was to point it out the differences in the discourses uh, in order to know how to come over all these obstacles and how to manage uh, the future of Ukrainian scientists at all. 
and um, in some cases we ca cannot change, for example, if it concerns the uh, history heritage, we cannot change uh, this uh, point, but concerning, for example, the language identity, we can easily do it, and so we think that uh, one of the most important th finding of our workshop is uh, to open a scientific market for uh, Ukrainian scientists. It means, uh, as uh, our colleagues have already mentioned, it means uh, publishing, it means uh, the uh, conferences, uh, and also it's, uh, in one year it will be very important for those who will um, establish their career in Germany or rather in Europe to apply in any position in academic uh, community. It will be very, very important. And here we have a lot of obstacles which we cannot uh, resolve separately as linguists, but we need also the support of politicians of both countries. And it's the next issues uh, which were highlighted during our uh, workshop. But the question of how can we open the eyes for those politicians and to, uh, for our needs? And uh, we thought a lot about it, but uh, we think that the most, um, so uh, we hope that the media as a powerful uh, so can, uh, uh, can influence on politicians and uh, they can hear us. Because without media, it, perhaps it will be not only uh, published media, but I mean also on social nets, et cetera, et cetera. And for this purpose, it will be perhaps also very important to uh, open or to set up um, a platform for Ukrainian scientists where can we share our opinions, our problems, or potential resolutions, and uh, so on. Um, so, and uh, one of the steps to manage all, uh, the, uh, these uh, issues is uh, also to uh, get knowledge in uh, scientific management and data management, because for Ukrainian, these um, terms as uh, data management, personally for me perhaps, I don't know what does data management mean and scientific management. And uh, I need something about two years to have just a small, small part, tiny <laughs> part of this knowledge to understand. But I cannot say that I can fully accept this data management because it's not only the knowledge, but it's also the uh, practice. It's a good uh, uh, knowledge in computer, and et cetera, et cetera. So we need this uh, knowledge, and we hope that perhaps it will be possible to have some workshops or, I don't know, courses, how to be involved in this process, because without data management, without data, uh, scientific management, uh, we, can, we cannot establish our career in uh, Germany or in Europe. And the last words, hope for the future. I think that everyone, we have only one hope, to make our country free of Russia. And, uh, but when it will happen, nobody knows, the war takes on, and uh, the uh, so uncertainty looms, leaving us unsure when, it, uh, when the war uh, will end, and so we have a lot of troubles about our future. But we hope that, in, I don't know when, but I want it to be <laughs> as quickly as possible, <laughs> that we uh, do not have any more war and deaths. And uh, the last hope uh, that uh, it is very, it, it, it is um, dis the most discussed theme is the integration Ukraine into European community. Yeah, of course, it's, uh, it is very important. We need to be integrated, but the question, uh, how? will be integrated. Um, we can, so, uh, 
think about integration, and on the other hand, we should think about our uh, identity. Yeah, because uh, to be colonized by Europe or by, by Russia, it doesn't matter how, but it's not the uh, way out. So yeah, we should. We are we are eager to integrate in European uh, community to be visible, um, but uh, we should adopt the best of this uh, integ uh, European. Um, uh, scientific uh, principles to our Ukrainian uh, scientific landscape, not to lose our Ukrainian identity. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you also for raising the topic of uh, decolonization again and, and, and pointing, uh, pointing, out, uh, pointing out the importance of that. Uh, so now, um, thanks a lot for, uh, for reporting and uh, for giving us a very, very short, concise uh, idea about what was going on in the morning. And now I would like to open the floor to the public. Um, we will be more strict on time right now because we thought um, there may be a lot of, a lot of you who, who want to uh, just uh, share their thoughts, share their ideas, uh, share their impressions and, and make a short statement. And to give those of you who want to the opportunity to do this, we thought that we should limit the time of those statements to around about 40 seconds. So, <laughs> so it's really now about short interventions, short and precise sentences about um, what is going on, what to do next, how to continue. Um, who will volunteer? as first. I have someone sitting in the front row with a very friendly face on a sheet of paper, and uh, he will show when, um, uh, when time is up. So, who would like to share their opinions, their impressions, um, their, their ideas? Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, for the second. Yeah. Uh, so for me, the main message, I mean, the main thing I learned here, so there is a definitely gap between the scientific practice people use in Ukraine and in Germany. I mean, it, it, it's a less in natural science, but larger in the, in the humanities and social science, especially we heard yesterday that it's all this temporary contract and things, something like that could be frustrating. And, but what I want to tell you, that, that should be wrote with a two direction, right? So Ukrainian also should adopt for this temporary position. That's a culture of science, which not only German feature, but basically it's all educational all over the world, where you get constantly funding, constantly applying for something, constantly looking for the new opportunities. That helps also you to grow. So that's, I think, what Ukrainian could learn and should learn. And then it will also help us to boost Ukrainian science when some of us may be back. So that's a really great opportunity, great opportunity that we are pushed now to, to study that, to learn how to apply, how to motivate ourselves to do that, which is in Ukraine, to be honest, was not usual practice before. So please use this opportunity. That's my message. Thank you. And, and who's next? You can also react to one another, so yes, please. Uh, uh, yeah, 40 seconds uh, sounds challenging, but anyway, I think that talking about uh, hope, uh, we should think first of all and mostly about uh, new generations, upcoming generations. And generations of Europeans, they are Ukrainians are integral part of this European family. Actually, it's not about question of ours and our even uh, like being, but it's question about how we have vision of the future integral, integrated Europe. Maybe this is like the point that highlights the whole topics and the topic of uh, scholarly like uh, field itself. Thank you. Thanks a, thanks a lot. And you see how it works. <laughs> Over here. Mm. Oh, 
<clears throat> it was a question, how will this meeting, this event, influence our future? So my feeling is, first of all, it's a great impression that so much Ukrainians are in Germany. So much Ukrainian scholars are in Germany. I would never believe that the quantity is so high. So it's important for me to see a lot of Ukrainians here in Berlin. That's the first point. What I'm expecting from this event, not an immediate uh, effect, but I have a feeling that German officials, German government, German society, German scholar administration, let me say so, have really interest to Ukrainian scholarships, to Ukrainian science. That's why I have a feeling that something will start working more effective, wider and deeper. That's my expectation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Mm. We have someone here in the front row, yes? Mm. So first of all, I would like to say that I'm very great uh, to, um, to have an opportunity to meet today and yesterday. And I'll hope that not only these days, but for the future cooperation of Ukrainian science, not only in Germany, but in Ukraine, and especially for strong support of our foundations who uh, provide us and give us this opportunity to continue our research. And um, I hope that um, we are looking forward to the next steps uh, of government of Germany for their support uh, future, for teaching opportunity here, and not only Germany, but in the whole European Union. Thank you. Thank you. So if I don't see your hand signs, just, uh, yeah, first over there, and then we have the lady in the front row. <laughs> I didn't plan to say this, but um, this, uh, I have like con conviction that formed d during this forum, this meeting, uh, I believe we need some kind of lobby for Ukrainian uh, scholars here. Not only here, but uh, in all these discussions between Ukrainian Ministry and German Ministry of Education and Research. And uh, you can see how um, actually there is the practice of German Ministry to allocate some uh, funds for some kind of research and they uh, um, discuss the priorities. And I believe that if we would influence this discussion of priorities, and uh, probably it will help uh, to allocate more money for this research uh, that we are doing here uh, and um, that can increase the uh, understanding of Ukraine and uh, all our Ukrainians uh, aspect of identities and so on in German society. But uh, of course I don't know the, what would be the platform um, that can help in this because it needs kind of the institutional uh, intervention, so to say. But I, I, I think it would be useful to think about it. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much. So I missed the possibility to be here today. Therefore, I will briefly introduce myself, Olga Garashuk, uh, the president of the German-Ukrainian Academic Society. So those of you who don't know German-Ukrainian Academic Society, welcome just to check what we are doing. But my point will be the following. I absolutely agree with the previous voice, we need lobby. And we want to uh, improve and to strengthen the collaboration between Germany and Ukraine. So this lobby are you. So please think about not only networking, but also bringing back to Ukraine everything you learned in Germany. And you are in a unique situation. Never ever Germany was opening so generously support to scientists of any country. This is really exceptional situation why Ukrainian scientists got this support, but we have to make maximum of it. Let's network, but also let's think about the next step. Let's think about co cooperation. Let's think about mutual labs, as we discussed already. Let's think that you are representative of Ukrainian lab in Germany and of German lab in Ukraine. And please try to materialize your knowledge. 
it should be common papers, this should be common research strategies, this should be new ideas for future research which you can apply to whatever funding agency are in Germany, in EU, and also in Ukraine. And you have to be this lobby, lobbying Ukrainian government, lobbying German government, and you have to give the voice for your Ukrainian science in Germany, in EU, and in Ukraine. So let's work together and let's look forward and let's try to materialize what we have learned. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for this very clear statement and sort of, uh, um, yeah, in German I would say appell. I, I, I'm lacking the English word, but this clear intervention. Thank you. Um, we've seen a lot of interventions from this side of the room, but not so many from this side of the room. So if there's someone there, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Just um, to respond, the previous voice, I guess, it looks like tradition. Um, as I am a technically minded person, so I used to deal with very concrete things, with calculations and formulas. Um, I'm thinking in terms of um, co efficiency, coefficient of efficiency. And... Um, I think that everyone in this beautiful hall will agree with me that um, efficiency of our um, personal, um, personal effect uh, or our personal efficiency is now very high because we are here, we are integrated somehow in these new standards, new procedures and new system of research, teaching and all other things. But if we talk about the process of transferring our knowledge back to Ukraine, to Ukrainian systems, and um, if we will think about the efficiency of this process, so of course it's like a big challenge. Uh, so that we should put all our effort, not only to be efficient for ourselves and our clothes, environment, but also to transfer our knowledge and skills to build a really new uh, system in Ukraine and to, to make these efficiencies higher. So it's a challenge for us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I really appreciate that you raised this question and just very short follow up to the topic of decolonization. Uh, you need to understand that Ukrainians are really straightforward and uh, uh, don't afraid to ask if you're not sure if it's West Plainian or uh, it's real help. Because uh, you always uh, can write go ahead and ask us, because, for example, to uh, ask Ukrainians and to force Ukrainians to participate together with uh, Russians, right now, for many of us, it's a kind of uh, epistemic uh, violence uh, based on hermeneutical injustice. But, for example, to help with uh, publishing and to teach other standards, it's not worth explaining, it's a real help and we will appreciate it. So it's just a follow up. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So if there's no further intervention, no one eager to share, um, I will, would like to thank you for those interventions. I think they are the first part of a very short and very brief summary of what we've discussed. Um, and I would try to wrap up a little bit, I won't keep you long before, um, before supper. Um, I think we have seen two days of really vibrant networking, which was really a pleasure to, to observe uh, and a pleasure to be part of. But what we have also seen is a very clear analysis and a very open and frank discussions from, discussion from both, both sides, from, uh, from Ukraine and from Germany. We've talked about problems, we've talked about challenges, and we've talked about gaps that we need to bridge. And I'm very, very grateful, and I think I speak for all the institutions that are here in this room, 
if I say that I'm very grateful for this openness and frankness, because uh, you said that Ukrainians are very straightforward, and that really helps us to understand and to adjust our strategies. And I think that's, uh, that's something that holds true for all of us. And I think this helped us to develop quite precise ideas for future steps to take. Um, I think if we think about future steps to take, we see three priorities. We, th we see the priority or the importance of networking. That's what I t took from all the discussions I've been part of. We need to we need established networks, not like we meet and we talk and we, we, we go away again, but established networks that develop some sort of impact. Um, we have seen the importance of being visible and of being heard by politicians and by politics. I think this is, that, that, that goes together with the networking idea, but we need to make our networks more efficient. That's where we, where we join. And I think uh, the third important point that we've seen is the importance of deeper knowledge about Ukraine in our, Western, in our German society and the Western societies. Our knowledge is quite superficial and is very much influenced by the war right now. There are exceptions. There are people who are really experts on Ukraine, but there are also many, many who do not know anything. And I think this is very, very important that we have this deeper knowledge and that we are open to learning things. So we have those would be the key, the three priorities that I've identified. I think we have seen challenges. We have seen the challenges of war, of stress, of trauma, of academic isolation. We've seen the lack of resources. We see that science lost priority. And we've seen also the challenge of many of you living in two houses, as it was, uh, for, uh, as it was said yesterday. But that against this backdrop, we have seen that long-term strategic cooperation needs more from the German side than just a willingness to help. I think what we need to stress is the mutual benefits and it's um, to see what Ukraine has to offer. And I think that is something that we need to stress in any future discussion, that it is not like we want to help someone, but it, it, that it is really like we want a cooperation on the same level and both sides have to learn and both sides have to change. And um, only this is the way to a sustainable cooperation and to a sustainable future, in, from what I've taken away. Um, what we also have seen as a challenge is this uh, parallelity of the logic of war and the logic of reform. As well, the reform of academia, as well as the reform if, if of EU uh, integration. Um, and also there, there it holds true that we need to stress uh, the things, the benefits that the Ukraine has to offer to the European Union. We have discussed this yesterday, but I want to stress it again. Um, because I think, or we have seen that the uh, EU integration of Ukraine is of vital interest also for the EU. Not only, to, but uh, talking mainly, but not only about security issues. Um, that again stresses the bridging function of uh, Ukrainians in Germany and in Europe, and their function as sort of interpreters between the two societies or the different societies and cultures. But what I also would like to stress is, um, or what we stressed, is that academic exchange with Ukraine, which is now mostly taking part in Germany, in Western countries, in Poland perhaps, should move back to Ukraine as soon as it is in any way poss possible. Because at the very moment, we have sort of unilateral mobility, Ukrainians moving out, but no one moving to Ukraine. And that is something that we have to think about in the future as soon as security allows it, um, that we stress Ukraine as a place where things can take place, and not as a place where people come from. I think this is, this is very important. Um, to add a little bit from the perspective of the DAD, which is a funding organization. So we have a very special uh, perspective on things. We always think about what to do, how to change our portfolio to take up what we've learned. Um, if we take our funding policies 
beginning in February 22, as an example, we see that the first thing we did was like think of what what can we do to help? What can we do for refugees? What can we do to, to, to support people? But um, I think we moved from that to serious cooperation um, and also um, to considering the necessary change in Western and German societies. Um, last thing it was mentioned yesterday that we did to, to initiate this change was to establish those two centers for interdisciplinary Ukra Ukrainian studies. Um, but what we also see as a positive effect is that mobility and cooperation, mobility in a one-sided way, as I pointed out, but that mobility and cooperation have extremely intensified since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So there is something happening and there is more understanding and more um, serious cooperation with Ukrainian partners within the German academia. And I think this gives us at least a little bit um, reason for hope. Um, um, yes, but uh, to conclude this, I think further efforts have to be taken. Uh, perhaps the funding portfolios of our institutions have to be revisited and or revised and adjusted um, to, foc to focus even more on this this idea of mutual benefits, of mutual learning and of really cooperation on the same level. Um, so much for a short wrap up. Um, it's a bit difficult, but I think that's, that's, where we, that's where we stand. And I think that I speak in the name of all the institutions that are here. Um, um, if I now would like to uh, say a few words of thanks, um, especially uh, to our host, the Alexander from, from Humboldt Foundation, uh, to um, Frank Albrecht, Maike Diderot and their team um, for the organization, which was quite smooth and perfect. And I think everyone realized that, they're really, that there's a lot of work behind it, but um, that it is, this is done from, from their hearts. And that was, um, it was good to be here. So thank you to the organizers and their team. Thank you to all the partner organizations to, for making this possible. Uh, surely for the federal ministries for funding um, and with a slight hint to please carry on funding things like this. <laughs> um, and last but not least, uh, thanks to every one of you for being here, for being part of it. You really are those bridges and those ambassadors, ambassadors uh, for Ukraine, ambassadors for Ukrainian German cooperation, but also ambassadors for democracy and for the willingness of Ukraine uh, to follow the path um, that it has started before the Russian invasion. Um, I think we should also uh, think in the end of those who cannot be here, of those who keep on under most dire circumstances in Ukraine. I'm always impressed to see with how much endurance um, you, you uh, keep on to educate the next generation. I think this is really key to the future. Without uh, education, without research and science, um, the next generation will, not, will have no future in a way. And it always impresses me to see how you keep up, how, how you keep your education system and your research system running. This is, I think, really, really, really impressive. This gives me hope for the future. And um, so again, a warm thank you to everyone for being part of these uh, last two days. And I might um, hint that we are thinking about how to use the results of those discussions um, to communicate in the political room and in the political era, area to um, to make something out of it, to not let it stop here, but to, uh, to continue. Thanks a lot. And now only two housekeeping hints. One is those who are still uh, continuing in the Philip Schwartz Initiative Forum, it's those with the white lanyard, so now the, the riddle of the different colors is being solved. Um, 
they will now be transferred to the next location and should follow the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation signs. There's someone with those signs in the back. And so those with the white lanyards have to leave now, but they will um, just continue to network. And for the others, lunch is being served out there. And um, I was asked to um, say that perhaps people from different funding organizations or from different contexts would like to take photos together. So if there's any need for taking photos, I think there were the, at the right hand side where the tables of the different organizations were, uh, were is the ideal location uh, to take photos in different groups, whatever you like. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the day. Have a safe trip home. Thank you.